the the media has been pretty uh, uh, terrible in the way that they've covered Bernie. I was trying to find a nice word to say, uh, but uh, they fuck them because uh, the, the media has just been a bunch of assholes, right? So you have shit like uh, what uh, MSNBC. This is this is specifically some of the stuff that uh, MSNBC has said about Bernie Sanders, right? Chuck Todd, Chuck Todd uh, called his supporters. So here's the thing: like when they can't, um, when they can't really go after some of the policies and the ideas that they're talking about, these candidates that are talking about, they'll, they'll start going after some of their supporters and they won't even go after like a majority of their supporters. It's like the 10 people on Twitter that go after like, you know, Tulsi Gabbard or Elizabeth Warren supporters uh, and call them a bunch of bag of dicks or whatever. And then, and then they're like, aha, that's the bird. That's who it is. That's who's supporting it. Huh? And that's, and that, you know, that's what Bernie is. And uh, and that's what they do. That's what they like to do. So that's what they did with Bernie. And Chuck, Chuck Todd uh, said that he's got an army of digital brown shirts uh, equating Bernie supporters to Nazis. Digital brown shirts. Uh, hey, Bernie's Jewish. And his supporters are also primarily minorities, people of color, women, uh, the working class, which includes all of these identities. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Nazis weren't for any of that shit. Like, I... Why, what kind of short-sighted, weird fucking thing, like, what a weird thing to do is like, yep going to compare the Jewish senator from Vermont, one of the most, like, lefty-leaning rural states in the country, uh, to a far-right authoritarian dictatorship. That makes sense. That specifically uh, hated the Jews. That makes sense. Fucking Chuck Todd. Another point, um... That, uh, that Chuck Todd made uh, was uh, the right will hammer and sickle you. He talked directly to he's talking directly to Bernie now, right? Because uh, Bernie is uh, friends with Chuck Todd. They will they will hammer and sickle you, right? The idea is that because he talks about democratic socialism, uh, they will uh, they'll they'll just say that it's communism and that's that's how it'll be sold and that's how. Uh, no, you, you'll you'll be you'll be framed, and uh, I think I think that Chuck Todd uh, and the right should open a fucking history book uh, and learn about some global history uh, and not just the one that America wrote. Maybe if you did that, you wouldn't make dumb dumb statements like that all the time, Chucky e. T. Here's another, here's another gem that Chuck E.T. came out with. Uh, Bernie Sanders got a D- minus from the NRA. Yeah. Fucking good. Why do you want an A-plus rating from the NRA? Like, I don't think anybody's been like, you know, if only the NRA would say nice things about me, I would, I would be in the clear. Like, no, I don't think even the politicians that do get an A-plus rating from the NRA are like, yeah, great, awesome. This is a big, uh, big thing. They're just like, okay, just fucking, just shut up about it for a little bit, maybe. Don't, don't, don't tell people that the NRA gave me an A plus rating. <laughs> like, the NRA does not give a shit about like people or uh, gun rights or any of that sort of stuff. They are uh, trying to fucking make money off of the death of other people that's what they're that's what they're doing that's why every time there's some kind of mass shooting uh, that happens the NRA comes out and talks about you know how we need to protect the second amendment when it's like you have a fundamental misunderstanding of what the second amendment is and I don't know if anybody was ever supposed to have an understanding of what the second amendment was based on how it's written uh, you know everybody talks about those commas yeah 
I, I'm pretty sure they were just like, I don't know, let's hodgepodge some things. I feel like that was just them being like, hey, maybe a government might need to be taken down at some point. Because, uh, because sometimes people are uh, dumb and they elect authoritarians and then they get stuck and it sucks. And they might need to fight back. But that's not what the NRA stands for, right? The NRA does not want you to be armed against any sort of, like, authoritarian government that might come about, but they want you to be scared of each other. That's what they want. That's the whole point. That's kind of the way they talk, and that's what they preach. Uh, so, you know, that's what, that's what the NRA does. Uh, and if somebody gets a D-minus rating from the NRA, that's a good thing because uh, uh, that means that that candidate probably doesn't want to profit off of a bunch of people being scared of each other and pointing guns at each other. That's, that's, that should be seen as like a positive thing in our society, Chuck. That's a good thing that comes out of the society is that we're not trying to murder each other, but we're trying to help each other. Also, Bernie is from Vermont. Like, that's a bunch of liberals with guns. Like, they know about gun responsibility. They know that you have to know how to use a killing tool, right? Like, they have to do that sort of stuff because, uh, fun fact about Vermont, that's bear country. Bears live there. And sometimes they'll just, they'll be like, hey, I know people live here, but uh, I'm just going to come hang out in your backyard. So, what's up? Oh, actually, now I want to come inside your house. Yeah, like, that's... the fuck? And, of course, Chuck E.T. also went to the, the classic and quintessential... Bernie bros argument, right? And and the big thing uh, with that was, uh, well, you know, what are we supposed to call them? Bernie siblings? The Bernie people? I mean, what are we... <laughs> uh, you know, and how about Bernie supporters? Not everybody needs a fucking cutesy-wootsy name that you can put on a fucking t-shirt. It's cool if you do. Like, but you don't need it. You can just say that I'm a supporter of this person. And that is good enough. I hate the Bernie bro argument because it really, um... It really ignores the fact that in terms of identity politics, Bernie has one of the most diverse uh, support bases around, right? Like, minorities, women, immigrants working class people, white people, black people, like, there's a lot of diversity, and the media kind of ignores that when they make this Bernie bro argument, um, and, which is so disrespectful, and I, I have liberal friends that'll listen to MSNBC and be like, well, Bernie supporters are all white, they're all white, they're all white males, they're all white working class males, and it's like, no, you just kind of diminished what the working class is. You also diminished the, the hundreds and thousands of people that support him that aren't white people. So maybe recognize that white people are a part of Bernie's base because everybody is a part of Bernie's base. Like that's, that's his point is like, hey, we all need to be part of this thing together. So fucking why would you narrow it all down because you have an agenda because Chuck Todd has, has an agenda that MSNBC has told him he needs to follow and this shit gets worse right um, because Chris Matthews ooh, something is wrong with Chris Matthews you guys uh, Chris Matthews went on the this weird rant during Iowa about like executions in Central Square if Bernie gets elected that the, there will be execution like public executions in Central Square and he might be one of the people that gets executed
I have listened to Bernie Sanders talk uh, a lot. And one of the things that I think Bernie has never mentioned uh, is publicly executing the billionaires and millionaires, right? Like, he talks about billionaires and millionaires a whole bunch, but he never is like, hey, we have to publicly kill all these people to send a message to who? Also, that's never been a thing that he said. Like, does Chris Matthews believe that socialism, the type of socialism that Bernie is talking about, is basically like 1500s France? With like, he thinks Bernie's gonna be like a tyrant king? Bringing the guillotines back? No, Chris, you're just going to get fired because you're obsolete and the way that you think doesn't fucking matter anymore. Nobody thinks the way you think is like, should be the norm anymore, which is great. Like, there's more people that don't think that way. Awesome. Fuck off now. It's just like a deep misunderstanding of what Bernie actually stands for. Then you have shit from the New York Times, who mainly focuses on the fact that Amy Klobuchar came in third in New Hampshire. And that was like the story. The story was Amy Klobuchar was third in New Hampshire. Hey, do me a favor, you guys. Um, Do you guys remember any winners of uh, the bronze medal in the Olympics? Do you guys remember those third place presidential winners? How could we? We only have two fucking parties. Maybe if we had a third one, uh, we would be able to have that discussion. Who Who cares? She came in third. She is, she is not a good candidate. You have a candidate that people actually want and are voting for, and it's a candidate that in 2016 uh, got the election stolen from him, and, and everybody was like, oh, there's no way any of these ideas uh, will, ever, will ever like be part of the mainstream conversation. And here we are, we're talking about Medicare for all. We're talking about uh, uh, erasing student debt and debt and uh, uh, making uh, uh, public colleges uh, uh, part part of the you know the the, the social uh, social pro- welfare programs and stuff like making public education part of the government so that you can actually have it free and everybody can access public education and it doesn't become you know uh, intellectualism doesn't become this this tool that only rich people get to have and. You know, uh, we're, we're talking about banning facial recognition software that doesn't make any sense and has uh, wrongfully convicted a whole bunch of, of, of innocent people than it has uh, c- actual criminals. You know, here we, we're having that. And, it's, and, and a lot of these conversations are happening in the mainstream, misguidedly so. I don't think the mainstream media does a good job talking about them, but they're at least bringing up these topics and having a conversation about it. In 2016, Washington Post ran 16 anti-Bernie articles in 16 hours. I remember the day that that happened because it was fucking insane. It was like, it was right in our, it was blatantly in our faces. It was blatantly in our faces that you were trying to lie about Bernie. Like you were just coming out with these spin pieces over and over, like, what an hour. What an hour they were coming out with that. Yeah. You know what you're doing? You're hammering our heads with neoliberalism and sickling our rights. That's that's what that's what these corporate mainstream media corporate companies are doing. So the question we have to ask is why? Uh, And the answer is that it's because the media is scared. They are scared. Um, Socialism is becoming more and more popular, right? Especially democratic socialism is becoming more and more popular. Uh, 
a lot more people are looking into it a lot more people agree with what bernie has to say um they have uh they they've either seen or felt uh this expanse of income inequality where ceos are making over 500 times that of the entry-level employee which is crazy um and they see all of this so people like chris matthews uh are fucking scared because that means that they don't get to be wealthy and rich uh, and go to Iowa and be drunk on national television uh, every four years and still have a job and get to rant and rave and scream all they want about nonsensical ideologies like executions in Central Park and here's the thing right for as much as all these uh, corporations like shit on Sanders for for bringing up socialism or socialist ideologies and all that. We already have socialism, right? Not just with, you know, certain social programs like, you know, welfare and, and, you know, uh, uh, cops and ambulances and that sort of stuff. But we have socialism for corporations. We have corporate socialism in America. They get to do shit tax-free. They get free shit all the time. Right, and guess who has to pay for it? We do, but it should be flipped other the other way around because they have more means than we do. Sanders is 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 winning. He won Iowa and he won New Hampshire. He's winning, and they didn't think that he would take this quick of a lead, uh, and now they're scared because not only that, but he's also winning without any PAC money. Or corporate money like he's getting money from just regular average Joe's regular average citizens like you and me and and he's beating them and that's fucking terrifying to them so they're gonna they're gonna do all these weird like you know exploitative manipulative media techniques these corporate media techniques right to, to maneuver the narrative, and if you pay attention enough to it, you know, if you listen to the people that really talk about this stuff all the time, uh, like myself or Ron Placone, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore, Eleanor Goldfield, uh, you, you know, uh, Anya Parmpil, Kim Iverson, all of these people um, that di- that dissect the corporate the the language of the corporate media, you'll see that. It's, it is hyper-manipulative. It's done very deliberately, and it's done because they're scared. They're scared because we're winning. They're scared because the, none of their old tricks are working anymore. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please give it a, a share. Share it around with some friends, with some enemies, whoever you think would, uh, would enjoy content like this. Uh, content like this is not often shown to a lot of people because of the subject matter. So uh, it is completely dependent on you guys to uh, to share this around and, and spread the word. Uh, and uh, make sure that you you're, you subscribe and like uh, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed the content that I uh, that I talked about in this video, there is a good chance that you will also enjoy my live stand up comedy show. And I'm going to be uh, on tour. I'm touring uh, all around the country with, uh, with my socially conscious stand-up comedy show. Uh, I'm coming to Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm opening for my good friend Lee Camp in Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas as part of his book release tour. Uh, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and a bunch of other dates. Uh, if you want to see my entire tour schedule to see if I'm coming to a city near you, you can go to my website, which is ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Check out my whole tour schedule. You can uh, sign up for my email list there. You can check out past videos, old stand-up videos, old uh, road reflections, forkful of noodles, taboo table talk, just by, it's your one-stop shop for all things Chris Mohan people. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys check that out, and uh, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.